Now in question three of the 2016 uh, AP Chemistry FRQ, okay, we're doing a little lab here. So what's happening is it uh, says to determine the molar mass of an unknown metal, okay, M, a student reacts iodine with an excess of the metal to form the water-soluble compound Mi2 as represented by the equation above. Okay, so we have M plus I2 turns into Mi2. So that's important. We see it's a one-to-one -one ratio. We're seeing that we have excess of the metal. That's important. And that is going to be a water-soluble compound, Mi2. The reaction proceeds until all of the I2 is consumed. The Mi2 solution is quantitatively collected, so we're going to measure things, and heated to remove the water, and the product is dried and weighed to constant mass. The experimental steps are represented below, followed by a data table. So, we can see we have a beaker, and we're getting the mass of the beaker. We're adding some metal. We're adding some iodine. Oops. And then we add water, and the reaction occurs. Okay, the Mi2 is uh, aqueous. It's in the solution. We have some excess metal. And then we uh, heat it up, and we just get the uh, Mi2 solid in the tube. Okay? So given that the metal M is in excess, calculate the number of moles of I2 that are reacted. Okay, so here's our data table. And we're looking for the iodine. And we can see that uh, this step here, we had the beaker plus the metal. And then here's the beaker plus the metal plus the iodine. So if we subtract those two numbers, we should be able to get the uh, mass of the iodine. And if we know the mass of the iodine, we can turn it into the moles of the iodine using the molar mass. And keep in mind, this is I2, so we're going to have to double. So I, I got the 1 126.90 from the periodic table in the test and doubled it. So iodine, so I'm going to do 127.570, and that's grams, minus 126.549, and this comes up to be 1.029 grams of iodine. So. Okay, and then just by stoichiometry, I'm going to say there's 253.80 grams of iodine in every mole of iodine. And then it gives me an answer. 0 0.004023 moles of iodine. Okay. Um, one little problem we did see across the nation is a lot of kids wrote this down as 0 .004 and left it at that. They made it into a one significant figure number. And uh, if we were watching significant figures on this problem, uh, they would have lost a point. You know, because here's four significant figures. You know, from the subtraction, we're going to have four significant figures. On the periodic table, you get five significant figures. So if you round that off to one significant figure, that is a major error. Okay, luckily it didn't change the answer very much, and so it didn't. Uh, we didn't count it, but uh, watch out for that. Okay, calculate the molar mass of the unknown metal. Okay, molar mass of the unknown metal. So I think, yeah, we're going to go back and use this number. This is the Mi2. Okay, the mass of that, and we know the mass of the I2, so we can figure out the mass of the Mi2. Okay, the other clue that we need is because we're talking about the reaction way at the beginning, said for every M there's an I2, so if we know how many moles of I2 we have, then we also know how many moles of M that we have. So this number here is going to do double duty. It's moles of I2 and it's moles of M. So we know grams of M, we know moles of M, and we're going to be able to figure out the molar mass of M, the metal. So what do we say? So we have 1.284 grams of the metal, okay, I'm sorry, of Mi2. And we know now that we have 1.029 grams of I2. So if we subtract those two, we have 0 0.263 grams of the metal. Okay, so now we have grams of the metal. 
and we want the molar mass. So the molar mass is going to be 0 0.263 grams divided by 0 0.004023 moles and that's moles of I2 and also moles of M okay and for this we get 65.4 grams per mole okay um, and this is three significant figures, and that's four significant figures, or answer three significant figures. So 65.4 grams per mole, and if you look at the periodic table, that's probably zinc. So we're probably making zinc iodide, but that's not part of the question. Um, so far here, we have uh, one point for figuring out these moles. And then over here, um, we got one point for calculating the grams of our metal and then another one for finally getting here to the uh, molar mass. And again, if I were grading this, if I saw the molar mass and I saw some work, then I would have given both points. Okay, don't, you don't specifically have to show that step as long as you get there in the end. Okay, next part. Student hypothesizes that the compound formed in the synthesis reaction is ionic. Okay, propose an experimental test the st uh, student could perform that could be used to support the hypothesis. Explain how the results of the test would support the hypothesis if the substance was ionic. Well, a classic test, if we have a, a solution, okay, and we have a solution of ionic things, then that means that we have a bunch of ions, and if it's any good ions, then it would probably be a good conductor. So if we had a light bulb, okay, this would conduct really nicely. So, uh, you know, dissolve the substance in water. And see if it conducts. Okay, and test the conductivity. And then why that make a difference, okay, is that uh, ions will allow a solution to conduct. And if they conduct, if you have ions in solution, then that means it must be an ionic compound. And that's one thing you could possibly do. Um, you don't want to do anything theoretical like saying, well, there must be uh, positive and negative ions. There must have been a metal and a non-metal, you know, because that's not a test. Okay, that's the theory behind ionic compounds. You know, you really need to do some kind of a test you can do. Okay, now it says here bromine and uh, the student hypothesis that bromine will react with the metal more vigorously than iodine uh, because the bromine is a liquid. So the question is, why is bromine a liquid and iodine a solid? Okay, we're talking about intermolecular forces present. So iodine, okay, bromine, okay, these are both uh, diatomic molecules. And if they're diatomic, then they must be nonpolar. And that's important. Okay, so two nonpolar molecules, and if we have two nonpolar molecules, then the only intermolecular force that's going to hold them together are London dispersion forces. Okay, so why would this one have a stronger London dispersion forces than the bromine? Because this is a solid, and this is a liquid, and the idea is that a London dispersion comes from having an electron cloud that gets polarized and then it induces a dipole in its near neighbors so iodine has more that's an I has more electrons okay therefore it has a more polarizable electron cloud And that means it's going to have stronger London dispersion forces. Okay, stronger London, uh, stronger LDFs, and that's why iodine is going to be a solid, where bromine is only a liquid. 
Okay, the last part here, oh, let's go back. Okay, so where were the points on this one? In part C, we got one point for proposing some sort of a test. Okay, and so our test was to dissolve it and test the conductivity. And then we got our other point for explaining why that would make a difference. And so the fact that we said that the ions in the solution would allow it to conduct, and that's where we earned our second point. For part D, by saying both of these had London dispersion forces, that was worth one point because they're nonpolar molecules. And then explaining why iodine is stronger, okay, and that has to do with the fact that it has more electrons. Now, you need to be careful here. A lot of times uh, students will say that it has a greater molar mass, which is true. It does have a greater molar mass, but just having a larger molar mass is not the reason. The reason is because it has a more polarizable electron cloud, and that comes from the fact it has more electrons. So the students really need to talk about more electrons, not just bigger, not just heavier. You know, it has to have more electrons. Okay, on to play here. Now we're talking about, while the uh, clean it up after the experiment, the student wishes to dispose of the unused iodine, solid iodine, in a responsible manner. The student decides to convert the I2 to I- minus anion. The student has access to three solutions, H2O2, sodium S2O3, sodium uh, thiosulfate, and Na2S4O6, and the standard reduction table showed. So which solution should the student add to I2 to reduce it to I-? minus? Okay, so let's look here. We're talking about this reaction here, and we have the I2 and we want to change it to I minus, so we want this reaction to happen in a forward direction. Okay, and that's going to be reduction. So this is going to be our E0 of reduction. Okay, and that's going to be positive 0.54 volts. Okay, but if that's going to be a reduction, they can't, the other one can't be a reduction. The other ones have to go backwards. So who is going to go in reverse? You know, this would cause which one of these to go backwards. And we can see by the numbers, you know, this is 0.68. And that is a stronger reduction than the 0.54. So this one is not going to go in reverse. So let's forget this one. So uh, H2O2, that's not our reaction. It must be this one that's going to change. Okay, and that means this reaction will occur in reverse. So if, if we can get this one to go forward, if we can have this guy go in reverse, and so we're going to change this number, it's E0 of oxidation is going to be negative 0 0.08 volts. Okay, and we're going to have this reaction go reverse. So we're going to have this chemical that reacts with this chemical, and that's the idea that's happening here. So, first off, <clears throat> what is the... Uh, solution that we want. We want a solution that has S2O3 two minuses in it and so that would be sodium thiosulfate, Na2S2O3. Okay, right, okay, we had a circle your answer. Now justify your answer using a calculation. Well, the idea is that if we, oops, if we have a reaction that gives us a, pos, a positive voltage, that would be we're going to get a negative delta G. So let's just do that real quick. So um, we're going to say what's happening is that our E of the cell is equal to, and I'm still working on letter E here, E of the cell is our oxidation potential plus our reduction potential, okay, which is going to be uh, oxidation negative 0 0.08 volts plus positive 0.54 volts, and that's going to come out to be positive 0.46 volts. Okay, now that's useful. Um, now that's our just that's our um, calculation. What's the justification? Okay, why does that mean that this reaction is going to be uh, spontaneous? Okay, and that we could say well, delta G is equal to negative n F E zero. Okay, and that's the number of moles. And that's a Faraday constant. So if this is a positive value, then the delta G is negative, which is going to be uh, thermodynamically favorable. So that'd be one thing to say. Or we could just say a positive voltage, you know, means that we're going to have a thermodynamically favorable reaction. Okay, but we do have to say something about that. We can't just calculate that number and leave it there because then we're leaving the reader to fill in the blanks. We have to tell them that we know it's thermodynamically favorable if we have a positive voltage or we end up with a negative delta G. 
Okay, the last part of this one is um, what is the uh, balanced net ionic equation for the reaction that's going to occur. And we have those two equations, so I'm just going to copy the first equation up here uh, in reverse. So I have two S2O3, two minuses, turns into S4O6, two minus plus two electrons. And my iodine reaction as is, so I2 plus two electrons turns into two I minuses. And I'm going to put those together, and my two half reactions will go together if I cancel out my uh, two electrons. And if I needed to calculate my delta G, then I would have put a two moles right here, two moles of electrons per mole of reaction. Okay, but we don't have to do that. And what's my equation then? is 2S2O3, 2 minus, plus I2, we don't need to put the phases in, S4O6, 2 minus, plus 2I minuses. And I want to double check real quick and just make sure that I haven't messed up any of my charges. So there's 2 minus, there's 2 minus, so there's 4 minuses on this side. And here's 2 times 2, 4 minus on this side. I, okay, my balanced equation. So here's my equation. And that's going to give me my other point. So let's go back and see how the points come out for this one. And here we get one point just for circling the correct one. Okay, so we had a one out of three chance of actually getting that. And then we needed to have our justification. And again, our justification said include a calculation. So we had to do this little piece, but we need to go one step further and say why does that positive voltage mean it's going to, uh, reaction is going to go? So we had to say that that positive voltage means it's thermodynamically favorable or relate the positive voltage with a negative delta G, which means it's thermodynamically favorable. So get that calculation and then take it one step further. Why did that make a difference? And then the last part, one more point for, so that's a point for the count uh, there, point for here and then a point for our balanced net ionic equation. And that's all 10 points. That's the end of this FRQ.